Have you ever tried to fix a problem, but you just ended up making things worse? This is that kind of story, but with animals. So it's a living, breathing, moving, evolving, reproducing version of a problem. Follow me for a second. This story begins with one of my favorite snacks growing up, sugar cane. Apparently, sugarcane is pretty big business in Australia. In 2020 alone, the country produced over 31 million tons of sugarcane between 3,830 different businesses. And this is nothing new for Australia. Sugarcane was first introduced to the country in 1788, and when they finally figured out how to make it grow, the government, desperate for income, supported the establishment of many, many sugarcane plantations in the 1860s. And things seem to be going pretty well as they often are when you establish a cash crop on the backs of indentured servants and slaves, but I digress. By the 1930s, sugarcane farmers ran into a bit of a problem. It was a problem caused by a creature that's native to Australia, a creature called the cane beetle, because surprise, surprise, it eats sugarcane. And it took to the plantations like a tourist to a food truck filled parking lot, just trying a little bit of everything. The adults love to chow down on the leaves, but the babies, the grubs, the larvae, they hatch underground and chew away at the sugar cane's roots, stunting its growth or just killing the plant altogether. And for a country whose economy was being built around sugar, this was not good. At first, they tried controlling the cane beetles with chemicals, but that didn't work. So they thought, well, since we can't control the beetles ourselves, why don't we just introduce a creature into this environment to prey on the beetles? Because less beetles means fewer larvae, which means less damage to the sugar cane. Sounds good on paper. And that's exactly what they did, and they all lived happily ever after. I'm joking. The creature they introduced was the cane toad. And to their credit, to their only credit, this creature had been successfully used in Hawaii to control beetles. But Hawaii is in Australia, and the differences between those two environments would have dire consequences for this little experiment. First of all, sugarcane can grow over 20 feet tall, and the beetles love to feed at the top of the sugarcane stalks, which doesn't make sense for the toads that are supposed to be eating them because they can't fly or climb. To make matters worse, the beetles are usually more active during the day, and the toads, which are supposed to be eating them, are nocturnal feeders. You get where I'm going with this? To make matters even worse, Australian cane fields are much drier than the habitat the cane toads had in Hawaii, where they had been introduced, and in their native South and Central America. So the cane toads, when they were introduced in Australia, just moved away from the sugarcane fields in search of more hospitable conditions. Cane toads can measure anywhere from four to six inches, weigh up to 2.9 pounds, and live anywhere between five and 10 years, which I never considered that there might be 10-year-old frogs hopping around the planet, but here we are. Like any good invasive species, cane toads are great at reproducing. To give you an example, frogs that are native to Australia tend to lay anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 eggs. Cane toads, on the other hand, which can reproduce year round, can lay anywhere between 8,000 and 30,000 eggs at a time. And they can do this twice a year. And even though they aren't in their ideal habitat in Australia, they're actually doing just fine. That's because they can adapt to many different environments. They prefer fresh water, but they can tolerate salt water. They breed and move the most during the wet season, but they can lose more than half of their body moisture and still survive. And they're not just surviving out here either. They're thriving, as in they're spreading across Australia at a rate of 24 to 37 miles a year. As a result of their hardiness, cane toads easily outcompete native animals for food and breeding sites. A 2004 study showed that cane toads spoiled one third of nesting attempts from ground nesting rainbow bee eaters by taking over their burrows and preying on their eggs and young. Which brings me to another weapon in cane toads arsenal of adaptability and hardiness, which is their ability to eat pretty much anything they can fit in their mouths. What do I mean by anything? I'm talking about lizards, snakes, frogs, tadpoles, marsupials, mice, snails, insects, pet food, human food, anything they can fit in their mouths. And I know this isn't new information for some of you, but the rest of us need a moment to accept the fact that frogs eat mice. 
They swallow them whole because they don't chew. I just... I, I can't be involved. So we know what cane toads are eating, but what's eating cane toads? Not much, because did I forget to mention, they're poisonous. They secrete a milky substance from these large glands behind their shoulders called bufotoxins. So when a creature that usually eats frogs or frog eggs, like birds, crocodiles, lizards, or snakes, try to eat a cane toad, they usually die from ingesting the toxins that are seeping from the skin of this toad that has this look on its face, like it just can't be bothered. But that's not where this story ends. See, nature has a way of balancing itself out. And in Australia, where there is quite a bit of nature, that balance is kind of weird. In 2011, the cane toads finally arrived in Western Australia, causing the collapse of predators like lizards and the northern quoll. But in 2014, researchers found a river lined with dead cane toads, and all of the toads had the same exact injuries. Their hearts and livers had been removed with surgical precision, and their gallbladder, which contained toxins, had been carefully moved aside. Naturally, researchers wanted to know what animal was so successfully and carefully hunting cane toads, and through infrared cameras and bite mark analysis, they discovered that the toads were being killed by native water rats. Water rats. Something I fully expect to be in Australia. I just can't ever go there, I don't think. They are large, nocturnal, semi-aquatic, carnivorous rats that are native to Australia and have adapted to live in the waterways, which also happen to be a favorite hangout spot of the ill-fated cane toads in question. Researchers aren't sure if they learned to attack the cane toads or if they adapted some of the skills that they have hunting other venomous frogs that are native to Australia. Either way, mothers teach their young how to hunt right when they're weaned, so the knowledge of how to properly hunt cane toads has been passed down very quickly. But the water rats aren't the only creatures that have learned to live with cane toads. Crows have learned to flip the cane toads on their backs, exposing their non-toxic bellies so that they can eat their internal organs. Keelbacks, which are non-venomous snakes that arrived in Australia from Asia, are actually immune to the cane toads' toxins because their predecessors evolved around toads with similar toxins. And some populations have learned to simply avoid eating cane toads altogether. Last but not least, we have the meat ants, aptly named because of their ability to strip the meat from carcasses. Meat ants are not only immune to the cane toad's toxins, but cane toads don't know to avoid them and usually can't run away fast enough. So scientists are experimenting with trying to encourage meat ants to establish colonies near cane toad breeding sites to see if that can act as a natural biological source of control. Results of those experiments aren't clear yet. What is clear is that cane toads aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Scientists estimate that the population of 2,400 toads that were originally released in the 1930s has grown to over 200 million toads, hopping all over Australia, just having the time of their lives. And it's not just Australia. Cane toads are on the list of 100 most invasive species in the world. Introduced populations can be found in Florida, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, two Japanese Japanese islands, most Caribbean islands, Fiji, and many other Pacific islands, including Hawaii. That's all for this episode, and if you come across a cane toad, hurry up and call someone.